Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we are going to be talking about one of the more popular multi-tools or versions of multi-tools that Leatherman ever produced and this is the Juice line of tools. Now what made these so popular was the fact that they are the most pocketable of all of the Leathermans. Well, with the exclusion of, of some of the newer tools like the T-Series of tools, those are fairly decent for pocketability, uh, but they don't include the pliers like you had in these versions of tools. And th this is one lineup that I think Leatherman really needs to turn their attention back to, or at least this size of multi-tool, a really compact, pocketable multi-tool. Even if it had really minimalistic tools, if it just had a pair of pliers, a knife blade, and in the case of the S2, this is part of what made it so so popular was the fact that it had a pair of scissors on here. So let's take a look at a couple of these. So we're going to look at the most popular one, the Juice S2. Now all the interior tools on all these are going to be pretty much the same except for the SX which had a little different screwdriver set up on the interior. But you get a full dimensional Phillips and you can hear uh, even though all these tools are uh, are just uh, are not locking they're just slip lock you can see or hear how robustly that locks into place and you really got to give it some pressure to get it folded back over this was one of the things that was great great about the juice line is that regardless of the fact that it didn't have locking tools the slip locks on all of these uh, implements worked extremely well so you have your combination phillips driver down here there is a little lanyard loop that's a little difficult to pull out so we'll close that up and then on the other side you get three flat drivers so they had one very fine driver your medium driver and then your larger driver here so there was some decent options on here as far as screwdrivers I really like the fact that it had a decent set of pliers on them. So uh, let's take a look at the first generation. Now, the only one that I have of the first generation juice is going to be my favorite of all time, actually, and that's the KF4. So the KF4, let's just put them together here so we can get a better look at uh, the pliers here. So you can see on the KF4 that the tip came down to a much finer point. It's just the way, I think it's pretty much the same plier. They just ground it a little differently. Uh, so they made it a little, smoothed it over a little bit more and gave it a little thinner profile up front, which made for a very precise set of needle nose. And it's something I very much like with the KF4. Uh, but the Juice S2 was a very good and popular version of the Juice line of tools. Now, a couple other things that I like about the KF4. First of all, the interior tools, like I mentioned before, are all pretty much going to be the same. But it was the outer tools on this one which added an extra layer apart from the S2. You can see there's just one layer thicker on the outbound side, which gave you the other outside accessible tools. So this one had... A serrated blade, which I get a lot of use out of. On the other side, it was the knife blade. And before we go any further, let's take a little look at that. So in the second generation, which are all of these, you'll notice that the knife blade is a little bit shorter in profile than the more the original Juice series of tools. Uh, I think, and I'm not certain about this, but I think that was because they needed to stay or were trying to stay compliant with European knife laws for slip lock knives. And so in order to facilitate better sales, uh, they made it so that it was places like UK compliant uh, with their draconian knife laws, if you ask me, but nonetheless. Uh, one of the other things that I really very much liked about this tool was the fact that it had the diamond file. Now, Leatherman has diamond files in the Wave, the Charge, uh, the Surge, some of the older models of tools. Uh, but the KF4 was, on, was one of those very few models that actually do have a diamond file. Most of the Leatherman lineup, uh, when you go down and look at them, actually carry just a regular file. So uh, the fact that it had a diamond file was something that I get a lot of use out of personally. So I, was very, I very much like that it's in this tool. And then for the more outdoorsman, you have the wood saw on the other side and in combination with an awl as opposed to, we'll look at the S2 with that with the scissors and the can opener combination. I like this combination, though I think this particular version could have been made more popular had they eliminated this in favor of scissors and left the awl or they could have gone back to the can opener that they put in the S2. And I think it would have made it uh, an even more popular 
a multi-tool than what it was. So with the S2, you got your combination uh, bottle cap lifter and can opener, as well as those scissors. And I just cut my nail, so it's a little difficult to get out of there. But So the scissors have that the uh, spring bar here for them, so they, they work fairly decent. They're probably not the best scissors that Leatherman ever made, but they were very capable and so you could you could get a lot done with them now some of the other leathermans like the xe6 was probably getting out of the pocketable versions this was kind of i look at this particular multi-tool as leatherman's answer to the swiss champ if you will from victorinox where it just kind of throws the most needed tools into a, a really as much com as compact as you could possibly get of a knife but the fact that this has pliers uh just makes it better in my opinion than than the oh i don't know about better uh it's just more useful to me that's how i'll put that maybe not better but more useful to me because then it, it also had a lot of exterior tools as well as the interior um the interior screwdrivers this version has scissors it also has because it adds another layer it also has the saw and the all combination and let me get those put back down on the opposite side you have the file which this one does have the diamond file and you also get the serrated blade and then apart from that you get the can opener and the actually this works in combination for the wine bottles too so i think Remember how that works. I think you, the notch up here helps you to get on the lip of the bottle or something. I'm not sure uh, because I never use it in that fashion. I'm not much of a wine drinker. In fact, I, I don't even like wine. But uh, they did have the corkscrew and it did work in combination with this. So I, I can't remember how that worked. You, I don't know. I'm sure that you guys have, uh, somebody has used it in that fashion. But anyway, the two were supposed to work in combination with one another. So uh, this was a bit unwieldy for the pocket though. And so this one came with its own case, which is a very compact little leather case that actually rides pretty nicely on the belt. Uh, these other versions were more pocketable. You have the CS4, which is tool lineup is a little bit different. Interior tools are going to be the same, but this one has the corkscrew. In fact, all these other three are going to have the corkscrew uh, can opener combination. This one has your scissors as well. And on the other side, it has your awl and saw. And then the last tool is going to be your knife blade. So this one has a very... Uh, a very useful set of tools is the CS4 so it just all kind of depends on whether or not you need a corkscrew because it does have the screwdrivers that come with it on the interior as well the C2 was much like the S2 in profile except that uh, in favor of the scissors it adds in the corkscrew so uh, I kind of I don't even know that they should have made this particular version to be honest with you I think that uh well, maybe. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of wine aficionados that might have, have gotten a lot more use out of corkscrew. It's also good for for taking out knots and paracord and stuff like that, or at least to try to get them undone. So uh, this is very similar to the S2 in that regard, with the exception of it changed uh, the corkscrew for the scissors. And then the SX was pretty much the same as the C2, except it has a different driver set up on the interior this kind of was a skateboarder's tool if i remember right so i don't remember what size allen head they have in here and then they so they dropped two of the screwdrivers in favor of one allen head uh, but apart from that it's exactly the same as the c2 with the exception of obviously the color as well now i'm not saying that leatherman necessarily needs to reinvent or reintroduce the juice line in the third generation but i do think that they need to concentrate uh, a little bit of effort into uh, a pocketable a truly pocketable multi-tool like the juice series of tools even if they had to re-engineer everything uh, and downsize things and i really think that they should concentrate on something that's slim profile like the s2 was i like the fact that it had the knife blade i think a knife blade scissors i would rather see an awl instead of the can opener put an awl there uh, and then leave it the same on the interior with a com some different combinations of screwdrivers 
plus a very good set of needle nose pliers and you have a really winning combination for a, an all day everyday carry uh, multi-tool now personally I would actually like to see them extend the frame a little bit more so that they could actually get a bit exchanger in this tool and use be able to use it with uh, Leatherman's bit kit. I think that would be even better. Obviously, you would sacrifice a little bit extra length in order to be able to accommodate that. Uh, but that would also elongate some of the flat drivers and maybe they could play around with uh, different combinations of tools that they might put in something like that. Again, I'm not necessarily advocating for a Juice version 3. Uh, there, was a, there had to be a reason why they uh, discontinued these. Obviously, the sales numbers weren't up for these particular tools. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, that's a real shame. That's a real shame. And maybe one of the things that kept it from being as popular uh, apart from the price, because these were pricey multi-tools, because there's a lot in here, a lot that you don't necessarily see or... Uh, I think these were on par in price. They might have even been a little bit more expensive than their Wave counterparts at the time uh, because they were so complex. But the one thing that's missing off of this is definitely a pocket clip. And if they would have added that to it, I think these would have even been more popular. Well, this is a look at what I think Leatherman needs to at least take a look at is the, the more pocketable multi-tools. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one.